Okay, deep breathing. You know, so as I mentioned many times that a form is essentially a book of movements. So it's how we house our movements as a traditional system. This, this is the technique we use to house the movements so that we have something to draw off and practice and which is different from sort of eclectic systems which kind of randomly pick some movements and then they use them as techniques. Traditionally house these movements so that we can draw off of them and you know it's not just a sequence of movements that are randomly put together. You know they've been strategically put together to develop a mapping of footwork to build body form, body coordination and you know these movements essentially are the movements that you would use as self-defense or inspiring. Now, a lot of people that w haven't practiced form would say, you know, they don't work. And it's true. Forms themselves and application will not work based on the movements that you're doing sequentially. So that's not your real goal is to go through the movements and then, you know, figure that they're going to work in this specific scenario. You know, in most scenarios when you apply a technique, are not actually compatible with the moves you're doing in a form unless you're doing two-person sets. And those are specifically designed to practice the individual movements. So when we practice form and develop our body form and technique and timing within the movement, it's really to develop conditioned reflexes. So what are conditioned reflexes? The movements that have become uh, movements and patterns that have entered your subconscious. So when you're using movements, you may not use movements in the exact form that you do uh, specifically in the form. So we call that full form imagery, half form or quarter form, depending on how much of the complete form you're using, form meaning the posture within the movement. So the, the most essential thing is to learn the movement so that you're working within your space. So uh, the movement and posture really work within a reference. The reference is what we call high, middle, and low. So low movements are the low, low blocks. Middle movements are what protect your chest cavity. And then the upper movements are what protect your head. So most of the movements that you're doing in your form, pretty self-explanatory. When you begin to analyze your form, you'll say, well, OK, high movements, middle movements, low movements, depending on how you're applying that technique. So that's, you know, you can set up those scenarios and you can just go through the motions, but the thing is, it's not always set up like that when you're facing an opponent. So a lot of times you have to respond. So if you notice in the forms, say, um, say Eric is doing a piece of gungji, or say uh, opening the fuhak, okay? So he does the salute, this is after the salute, and he does the first few movements, okay? And he goes through. So this series of movements, is actually a sequence and you build from one point to the next and then you move to the next so what are you doing in that instance you're practicing to move from point a to point b from where you left off so if i start here as a low block if something came here i would change to this if something came to here i would change to this okay if i come back down to a cutting hand it would change to that so those are patterns of movement and in application you know, how does that work? Well, if he threw a punch at my waist and I blocked, it would be like this. If he punched again to the chest, this would be the next movement. If he punched to the head, this would be the movement. If he punched again, it would enter here and I could turn it to a cutting hand or depending on what I'm gonna do. So those are actions, but you know, things don't always happen that way, but it teaches you a kind of a pattern to move from where you are. Because if you're doing movements that are one at a time, if he threw a punch, and then he threw a low punch, and I did this, and he threw a high punch, and I did this, and I alternate the hands, 
that's much slower. So for, for an action, you really only have to shift. So if, I'm, if he throws it here, actually I only have to do this. If he throws it in the middle, I just do this. So my body form has to work with those movements. So sometimes, you know, the movements work in tandem with the body or it works in conjunction with the body. So you're, you're actually not standing in a position trying to use the movements. That. This is just for training. So anyone that's studying a traditional art, you understand that training is different from what you're doing in application. You have to actually learn the movements and then interpret the movement and then apply the movement and then work with a partner to develop the spacing, the distance, the speed, and you know, judging what is required to counterattack your opponent and move so that you actually will be in, in a position close enough to strike back. So if someone punches, say, to the chest, and you do this, that's actually not effective. The reason why it's not effective is because you avoided it, so you really didn't need the block, right? So you put your hand there. It's actually too late to, to counterattack. You have to actually move. You have to move so that you're close enough to counteract within range. So what is that called? That's called avoiding. The first thing you do is avoid the technique. So avoiding comes from stepping or turning. So those are intercepting the force. So when something comes at you, the first thing you do is has, have to see it coming and judge. So if it comes, you have to first intercept. Now when you intercept, you can't intercept too forcefully because if that's a fake, say he just did a fake and I respond, then actually I've overreacted. You can't over, you have to wait. You anticipate without reacting, then you, you close. Now what I did was I turned my body like we're doing this movement in a salute. So when we do the salute, we're like this and then we do this. So you see the body form is very important. If he throws a punch and I do this, I actually did a, a multitude of things. The first one is my middle block. The second thing is I, I turn my body. Another thing I did was I actually rounded over. This rounding over is what you see when we do our forms and we're like this. The rounding creates a structural integrity and strength for the upper body. That's, in Tai Chi, we call it hollowing the chest, rounding in the back. And it's the same concept in Hunga. So when we st stand here and we practice this and push and practice this, this action becomes a rounding of the back. That rounding of the back lowers your center of gravity to here, which they call the Dantian, or we call the Dantian. And when you lower your center of mass, you're more stable. So the first thing you do, if he throws his punch, coming at me and I intercept, I have to create a structure here. That actually allows you to have strength and not actually meet the force that's coming at you too abruptly because if you overreact to that, you're actually stuck in a position. So if you're using your body form to dissipate that force, it allows you to react to the next movement, which would be from here, maybe like this. So this movement is the opening movement to the salute. So just the fact that you go like this, and then you sink, turn like this, and then step up, that's the salute and the punch. So this punch comes like this. Now, what's the efficiency of movement? Efficiency of movement allows you to create a motion and uh, be very quick with the motion because there's no waste of motion winding up and recoiling and letting it go. It all happens at one motion. So when you go like this, that creates action to deflect. The second part, well, if you go this way, then I can go this way. That so you're winding up and unwinding. So that whole process of winding and unwinding happens when you move your body. So we call that imagery. Imagery is you know, the posture itself, the final position. And then transitional positions, you know, those are the, the uh, we call the psi. And the, and the principle within the motion. So you have both final positions and then the transitions to get into the position as um, the transition with structural integrity. So that idea is very important. You have body form. So when you learn this and this, that's just your middle block. 
when you turn your body like this, there's your footwork. So when you step out, you're not rigid like this, which is how a, a new person would learn. You start here, one, two, this is part of that position. This is the position that sets you up. You're, you actually are setting up for this. And then as you pull back and you drop your hands, you create this. Now, some people when they do this, it's just they go through that motion. But the thing is, this movement is as important as this movement. Because this movement, when you bring it down, you know, has a, a number of different actions. One of the actions when you do this is your back fist, right? Then we have this, and we also have one of those. So that's a quadra back fist. So this movement is just practicing that motion. Now that motion, you know, all our forms have actions in them that can be either offensive or defensive. So the way I like to think of it is neither. You create the motion to develop the action so that your body is moving correctly. So dropping the elbow and then directing the arm and elbow is what's important. Now, if, if Eric were to grab my wrist and I turn like this, that actually is the movement that you're creating. That's breaking someone's grip. Now, if I take this hand and I go like this and I take this hand like this, this one, it becomes the back fist. So that's the quattro. So when you do this, this is the motion, but how you create the motion as an offensive, defensive motion, you know, is essentially the same movement, but used differently. So defensively, this is using this. Now, if I were to grab his wrist or just hold his wrist and press down, that's the typical joint lock for most traditional arts, whether it's eagle claw or uh, tai chi, they, that's really basic what you do. But what you're doing is working against his joint. The joint here is you're using a force down like this or like this. So the fact that you're turning, so this horizontal position to this vertical position is what creates the action and the force. Now, if you don't isolate the movement, when I go like this and I sink, the movement is coming from the body. Once he's down here, you send it out like this, right? So you have this and then you have this. So, so this movement, you know, even in the iron wire form, when you go like this, that's this. One mistake a lot of people do is when you make a quattro, you don't want it to strike like this. You just have to stop it here. Because once you stop here, then you have an action that can go this way. So that this movement is very important. It's a parallel arm position, and you're like this. Okay. So this is that motion. So this is something that you have. If you just practice this, there's your, your drill. Right. So the drill incorporates the whole arm. Now, timing of the body, when you sync with the movement, your body should be connected with that motion. It's not just stiff and then do this. That's isolated movement. The more advanced your skill becomes, the more integrated your body should be. Because novice skill is really isolated, one side at a time because of the coordination, because the body is not talking to each other from the right to left side, or even from the legs. Because when you're like this, you actually have to go into a stance. The stance work allows you to create a force downward. So if I don't turn to a leaning stance, I don't have pressure going downward. Okay. In fact, I can't even bring it over here and turn, simply because there's no support on this side. So that's where the structure and the structure integrity of your position you know, plays a major role, because a lot of people just are thinking forcefully on the upper body. The important part actually is on the lower body. So our footwork, our stance is all um, very important in, in building that strength and transition. So, so let's go into the form a bit and let's see. We just did this and we did this. Now this movement is actually moving. It's a moving bridge. So your moving is, when you, once your bridge is out here, when you turn, that helps you to redirect the force. You see how that's done? 
So you're moving. You move the force and it creates a circle. Because Kung Fu is typically kind of round and circular, that's a horizontal circle. This is a vertical circle. You see that? You see the, what I mean by a circle is like this. That's a circular movement. This is a horizontal circle. Horizontal circle is used in taking the movement and redirecting or pushing. So if it comes here, you can turn. So how many of movements that we have in the form that requires this, that requires this? Those are horizontal circular movements. The continuity of that movement really depends on what you intend to do with it. So the difference between movement that we do in the form and dance is a conscious intent. The intent is very important because the intent is where do I start to apply my force in a direction, right? So, you know, it's, it's very important to understand that direction based on how you manipulate your arm and skeletal structure to create that action. Because when I go like this, I still have to have something here. When I go like this, I have to have something there. So you can't just, it's not really just soft. So sometimes we do the form, you say, oh, just don't use strength but you have to have something in it to create an action that actually has what we call in Tai Chi is Pang energy. Here it, it, it has some tension but not stiffness, see. Strength and, and movement should be soft and pliable but yet firm. So we can't be completely flaccid and it can't be completely rigid, see. The biggest conflict in movement is really tension, stiffness, is something you should avoid because speed comes from being loose but you can't loose to the extent that it's you know f sort of your body is relaxed so loose is relaxed not just letting it go so when you relax if he throws a punch and I just go like this I'm just ab absorbing that so all I did was this but if, if I want a punch it would be like that right because because I'm, my commitment to this, to there, is really just an instant. So here, that's it, right? But I'm not gonna just go like this because my body is not connected. This re feel, doesn't feel right. This feels right. Because during that process, it's a cycle. So when I'm like this, it goes like this. So how do I know when to stop? It's perception and judgment. Because as soon as I touch, I already know where he is. So I can extend this far and hit him in a glass or stop here or here, right? So boom, I just know. And hopefully he has the confidence to let me <laughs> do that punch without blinking. That's, that's Ditak, yeah. So when you move, it's just a split second, ba -ba. Anything. Like my teacher would say, if it's dit doc doc, it's already too late. So dit doc doc is this. It's too slow. Here. Dit doc. So the hands have to work in a cycle. So if you hit here, boom, then this one follows. Now if you go here, then it comes down here, you see. So that's just, so really, you know, each one of these bursts of energy is just a sudden movement. Now, one of the things a lot of people don't realize is that, you know, when we go through our forms, it's somewhat aerobic, right? But yet, when you do techniques, it's non-aerobic. Because if I throw a few punches, I should be exhausted or winded because my breath and movement is not coordinated. So what it is is, these explosive movement doesn't really require any oxygen. It just happens. So how do I talk? do this and then don't lose my, my breath because the upper breath and the lower breath are working in unison. Okay, so so these, are, these are theories and concepts that allow you to understand why on a physical level it's one thing, on an intrinsic level is another thing. Intrinsic level is when you embody the movement, build the coordination, become efficient with the motion and it's natural. Okay, so that's really the end goal is to develop naturalness and movement and, uh, you know, not excessively tight. Because excessively tight, even though, you know,
type appears to be strong, it's actually useless because you know that's for posing. So if you if you just want to show how ripped you are, then you're probably going to get punched out because <laughs> because you're going to be standing there like this. But so <laughs> so you actually have to stay looser and move. And so that's just the idea. But you know, a lot of this is we laugh at it, but it's kind of true, All right? So okay, so let's go to um, back to the form. We'll go into the horse stance section. So we sing one, two, uppercut. So this chow choy. So this is really the same uppercut. We do it in this stance, but when you use these movements, you never use it in the horse stance like this, because you don't have power because you can't put your body behind it and you're not in a stance. If you're gonna use an uppercut, you have to be in a stance. Just like when you do fuak, you're like this. There you have power. You can go like this, you can go like this, and you can turn your body uh, you know, as uppercuts. But once you're here, this is just to practice this. So what is that, why would we practice that? It's a motion. It's a motion in a vertical direction. So this is a strike, so I say, okay. But you, because it's a fish, you think you have to hit. But actually, if he throws a punch, and I go like this, right? So the first part of the dragon is this. So when he comes up, isn't that this? And then I turn, see? So this is a motion, and then this is a motion, and this is a motion. So just based on the concept we talked about before, one, two, three, it's the same idea. We move from point A to point B and keep it continuous just to teach our body how to move. Because if someone like, if he just throws a punch to, and I didn't know what to do, I would just back off like this. It's an uncontrolled reflex. I might just see it and then I just freak out and don't know. So a controlled reflex is when he throws a punch, I might do go low, or if he comes to the middle, I might just do that like I just did before, or I might do this. So the, I, all I did was place my hand here. See, that's the, the, a piece of the dragon, right? This is the motion. Is it this part, or is it this part you're using? See, if Steven's here. See, we do it slow. This is one phase, so that's in that corner. This is another phase has to do with how you turn your waist. So when we're here, this is up, turn, right? If I switch like this, that's how you use the dragon to intercept, grab, and palm. Now, you know, in sparring, we don't, we don't use open hands because you have gloves on. So what my teacher says, when you put the gloves on, it doesn't matter what, how your arms move because you just do it with gloves on. So they use essentially the same hand movements. So in Kung Fu, we're not really using the hands, well, even though they're open, to do this. You don't grab at uh, opponent's arm. You intercept using your bridges. So these are your bridges. So if you're, if you're using this movement, if, you, if I use this, this is closed then it becomes a punch. So that's how you would use your movement when you have a set of gloves on. If I go like this, if I go like this, that looks like boxing or like this, or tie boxing, that's what we, we have all of those movements as well. So when we're here, if you just, your body shifts, all you do is have to shift. See, if I go like this, this, if I have a glove on, this captures it, this, you hook, and then this comes up like this. So those are, combinations of movement. You have this in you know, numerous parts of the form where the hands are continuous. This Sam Singling one called the three star continuous punch. You go boom, 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 boom. These are, that's what you're doing is moving your hands like that. If you go like this, boom, boom, boom. Those are the seven star continuous. When you strike here, you strike here, you strike here, and you punch there. So are those uh, set up, well that's usually in your offensive move. When the hand is here, if you have to think about where you're gonna hit the next time, it's gonna be too slow, right? So you just shoot from where you are, wherever it is. And those, but you see how my feet were working 
there because we have this movement. We have these movements. So that's the directional, you know, advancing toward your, your opponent. Because most likely, once your opponent sees your punch and, he, and you counter, and he goes back, he starts to go back. How do you follow him? You have to use footwork. So that's the mabu that use, is used to close or bridge the gap between your opponent. So, so this position right, is important. So even though we do say kung ji kun like this, when we sink down, we're like this. When I stand up, it's like this, right? So that's why your body has to be somewhat pliable and flexible. My hands are here, but when I shrink, right? <laughs> that's, a, that's avoiding. My hand, I go like this, he throws a punch here, whoop. <laughs> That's, so, you know, you've heard of in the, like the Wudong or uh, Wudong Mountain or Wudong sect, they use the turtle and the snake, right? So the turtle, don't they suck their head in and draw their head in when they're, you know, in a dangerous situation? You move your head, you bob and you weave. So that's why your head is very important. That's why we do neck exercises. You think we do this just because you don't want a double chin? You do it because you have to move. Your head is important to be able to move. So, so everything that we do in our warm-ups, everything that we do is a training. It's a skill to develop. You know, you look, you look, but you're moving. You know, so this is the technique. He throws a punch, you go like this, boom, boom. This is a technique, boom. Right, this is your head move. Yeah, boom, right? That's, so you learn how to do it. Boom, you create power from the head. Right? So you know, there's a lot, that's a head butt. Okay, so okay, let's get back into this. Boom, boom, boom. Then we do this. This is just practicing your bridge. So that's a circular movement. So once you're here, then it turns. Once you're here, it turns. But when you slow it down, you can see that you're drilling and you're turning and you pull it turning and you end it here. It doesn't end over there, it doesn't end here. It ends here, right in front of your shoulders. So that's important because when you do two movements, they end up like this because it's parallel and square to your body, okay? If you do one movement, it's centered to your body. So when we do a single punch, it's on the center. We do two punches, it's like this. But very seldom do you throw two punches like this. Because, you know, that just leaves you vulnerable and it's also ineffective because you can't get power from the body. So when you're turning your body, the punch should go to your center, just like when you chun kill. Now that's my center, you see. So that's already been established as your standard. So once you establish your center, all you have to do is face your opponent and always direct your middle to where he's going. And then you face that way, okay? If Andy were there, I would go like this. So you move, 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 move. So it's your body's like the torrent of a, on a tank. You know, you aim and you fire. You aim and you fire. So a lot of our strategy is just based on the body form relative to your space and relative to your opponent. But you always have to turn towards your opponent. So that's turning the corner. If I use a triangular step, like I step this way and I step this way, the triangular step is setting up, when he throws a punch, I move this way first and then I turn back this way. Now that's breaking it down to show you how you're angling into your position. But when he throws a punch, I actually just move like this. So this going to your side position. That's to the side called Wang Ben. Wang Ben is angular. Okay. So you can go to the front corner or you can go to the back corner, depending on the direction you're headed. Direct retreat would be this. Forward direction is this. So forward, backward, 
right, left, four corners. That creates the, you know, the octagon, which is actually the eight directions that you would do your ten tigers in, or the eight tigers, but you know you have two of them that are in the front. So the direction of those really are dictated by how you move your feet. You move in like this, or you cross like this. So these are all different ideas. The lower half has to have a certain amount of physical intelligence, and the upper body has to have intelligence. So what we actually develop is body intelligence that's connected. You know, upper and lower body has to work together so that you can develop synchronization, agility, and coordination. So all, amazingly, it's all developed through your forms. And people that don't think forms are important, you could stand here and do all these pos different hand positions, but not be able to move out of these positions. So if I just practice this over and over again for 10 years, I'd be pretty good at this. But then he, he throws a punch and takes a step backwards. And I'm, you take a step backwards to retreat when I go. And then I'm, I'm still here. I can't move. So what happens I have to learn to take that step. You know, how, how hard is it to take a step? For us, we've been practicing a well, lot. It's pretty, you say, well, it's not that hard. But when you take a tennis lesson, and they say, step to the side before you hit the ball, everyone goes like that. Because the eye sees it, but the leg doesn't know how to move, right? So really, when your eye perceives action, and you sort of calculate where it's going to be based on your experience, learn to take your step. Now, they're not doing any fancy footwork on that side step, but for us, we have to step and we have to coordinate the hand just like you would take that racket and then move. If you took one step and go like this, then it's kind of stiff. If you take a step like this and you move like this, then you, ha you develop, you know, what weight, power, transition. So when we moving our body, it's essentially the same. We move this way and then we move this way. So that creates stepping and body form to create that so right so th you know these are all sort of ideas metaphors scenarios to give you an idea so you can think outside the box so that you can say okay you know how does this traditional martial art work and a lot of times people misinterpret or or or, or uh, sort of sometimes even misled to believe that it's something beyond you know and that it, maybe it has some supernatural um, you know, mystical energy that you're going to use to injure your opponent. But it's really not that. It's really your body mechanics and your understanding of your movements. Okay. So once we're here, this, this is elbow. That's a lifting of the elbow and a, that's your wrist block. So this, 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 this. So that wrist block we call it sinking the elbow relaxer show chim jiao, right? That is the big, the best movement when someone throws a punch at you on a vertical. My hand is here. I just have to do this. Now you can do it forcefully and go boom, and then actually use your wrist as a strike. You can just strike like this and actually injure your opponent like this, or you can absorb it. See, so when I go like this, I'm just sinking. But you know, when I sink. That's my body. My body is sinking. So your body learns to react. When he throws a punch here, ooh, I just do this. The body responds. It's, it sinks. This is the, it would strike here. If his focus point was here, it missed. You see? See? So that's just avoiding. So if you have the confidence to let him punch and avoid, then you don't even have to block it. You just go like this. But you really need some security because maybe he planned to punch beyond that point. So you have to go like this. See? So this one is like that. That's your, your press. So a press to the back fist is what you do, kwa choi, right? Trapping hand, press, back fist. So the simplest thing to do for back fist is this. Just, just sink. Right. 
Qua. See, did that, right? Even though you hear three, it's just. He's getting closer. <laughs> but he was moving. <laughs> yeah. So, like that. So, that's for self defense, these kind of movements are, are the best. This, just sinking elbow, just bringing it up, that's your best movement as a reaction. So, all you do is bring it up, bring it up and drop. Bring it up and drop. So, everybody try that. Ready? Drop. So, don't make it too physical. So, what do you do? Just like in Zhen Zheng, fourth form, boom. One, two, three. One, two, three. So you set up the scenario here. It's like this. It's over here. So I go up like this. Boom. That's going to the side. Right? Boom. Right? I didn't strike it. Right? So you're here. One, two, three, four. See? So movement's actually uh, phased in into increments of movement. Let's go poop, 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 poop. So the, each one of those is a point of interception. Say, I'm going as, I go like this. I'm just going to cross like this. That's already a 45 degree line. Right? I'm going to flatten it here, turn it here, and it's going to come up. You see? So all you do is have to find the angular position for where you're going to go with the movement. If I use vertical like this, I'm vertical. Here, turn, push. You see? You have this in Gongji Kun, right? Whoop. Now this looks like the form. This doesn't look like the form. Right? So that's just do this, you can't turn this time it, then you're in trouble. You have to intercept here. I move here and then I turn. So when you turn your body, when you intercept, you you know, sort of initiate the counterattack really is timing and what your body knows to do. So, you know, all these things are, um, you know, strategies and ideas. So when you practice your forms, you know that you're not practicing blindly. You know, you're using, you know, your, your different limb positions. And, you know, we talk about bridges. You know, bridges are what links you to your opponent, and you have to use that, them in different ways. So the, you know, when you're going up like this, it's your protecting of your, you know, the upper body, so that when you sink, you just have to drop a little bit more in the legs, or you drop a hand. You don't need to do this when he throws a low punch. You don't need to commit two hands. That's actually going to um, leave you open on the top. When you're here, you just need to drop one, because you need this one to protect here. You see. Because this one, all you need is you punch through the head, you need to do this. Okay. So just based on what we were just talking about, if I do this and I do this, I do this. You see, this comes in like that. See, so when I'm here. So this goes like this. So just remember, when the hand is low, you go high. When the hand is high, you go low. So that's... You know, that's you know, a fairly simple concept. Then the same applies with this. If he comes straight at me, I want to move to the side. Okay. If he comes around toward the hook, I go to the middle. So you move straight in for moves that come around, and you move to the side when something comes direct, you see. That, but that's experience and judging. So. The more you do this, the more you can sort of, because he's going to sort of give a clue as to what his next movement's going to be, and then has to do with how he shifts his weight, how his shoulders are going to tilt, or where it's going to go. If the hand's up here, you know, it's a lot harder to do this. So if it's up here, he's probably going to do this, or do something along that line. Generally, if the guy kicks, he's going to have to shift his weight so the body goes back. So you, you, the trick is to, or at least your skill has to do with what he, he's doing with his body shift and how you respond. So you don't want to be too far away from your opponent because the further you are from your opponent, 
the harder it is for you to counterattack. And actually, if you're dealing with someone that kicks a lot, it's better you stay closer because that doesn't allow the opponent to, because he's got to create the space to create the movement for the kick, unless the person is super flexible. And you know, this, every situation is different, but you know, some people can get a kick off when they're very close to you. Some people, but most people that are fairly um, stiff will telegraph the movement before something happens. So, so that's uh, you know, basically some of the ideas of how we would use traditional movements in application. Uh, now let's go through uh, the 10 tigers to show you the cover hand and the single palm. So this is your butterfly. So butterfly is made up of two movements, your cutting hand and your middle block. You step forward and you push. Step up and push, okay? Stomp and uppercut or single tiger. So in the single tiger, you want the, your palm. A lot of times people palm way up there. It's actually only to your solar plex. It comes up to the solar plex because that's where you're striking. And it goes up because you want to go up into the sternum there, the strike. And then you cr stomp and you cross to the back corner. So there's your opening of the stance. And then you cross stance. Then you step up and palm. Then you cross again. Okay, then you spin and you push. Now, you know, when you're in this position and you spin, that could be a sweep. So that's why when you take your step, you don't pick your foot off the ground. You always want to move your feet, you know, as if there's an airspace so that you stay close enough to be able to plant your foot before you're, you know, caught up in, in that transition. Okay, then you're there, you, you push. Then you're going to cross over. Palm. Step. Push. Then you stomp. Push. Stomp. Push. One, two. Then you step. One, two, three. You face the front and then roll your body. And then chun kill. Okay, take your step. One. Two, three, one, two, three, turn. Okay, chun kill. Okay, water punch. Okay, punch, sun punch. Okay, hook. Switch, hook. Okay, cross hands. Okay, kick, scoop. Now that poke is to the groin area, okay? And then you pull back, and there's, that's actually a, a defensive movement. Then you kick, scoop, strike, and then phoenix eye. One, two. Okay, sh shake it out. So the phoenix eyes in a lot of the southern styles, though we practice it like this, we step back, one, two. Typically, you would just strike like this. So your interception of movement, and then you right away, so an interception move, boom, boom. So like this. So you're striking, striking. So the very small movement to create the next action. So that action is to use the phoenix. If you block and then strike, block and then strike, it's not going to be effective. So as soon as you come, it's called heel. You lift. It's a lifting movement. Even though in slow motion you can see a middle block goes like this, comes across. This comes from here. And then it, it actually lifts up a little bit and lifts. So the body form creates some of the lift. Because when your body lifts and rises, it's synchronized with the hand. So the down and up movements are created in the action of the step. You see? So, you know, there's so many ways of coordinating your body to create an action that can be efficient and be effective based on how 
your body lifts, turns, drops, and all of that is coordination. So, you know, with that said, all of this body coordination that we develop, if you're not using excessive strength, you won't injure yourself, but at the same time, this coordination is very valuable as you age. So a lot of traditionalists are pretty agile still when they you know, reach a ripe age because they're moving their body in a certain way. It's different from lifting weights, it's different from holding postures, you know, it's actually movement. So, you know, like I always talk about, movement is essential to life. It's also essential on the functionality side to, you know, be a martial art and it's functionality on the side of how you carry yourself, you know, from moment to moment throughout the day. So, but, um, you know, because we're sending this out, you know, anyone that's listening can probably understand many of the concepts. If they haven't heard it, then it's something that um, maybe in the future they can tune in on. And if they're interested, they like what they see, they could probably go to our um, communication center, send out an, a like, and let us know what you would like to see and hear. And that way we can maybe gear it towards something you're interested in, and we can make this into a, you know, a forum that would, you know, or experiences with the number of people that are out there in this country or in, in Europe or in, in Hong Kong, wherever it is, you know, there's a, there's a value to everything that, you know, that we're sharing here. And it's probably a lot of the traditional ideas that you wouldn't get just because of the language barrier or um, maybe even a, a different interpretation of the movement. But, you know, most of us that study traditional martial arts at least should have a, a basic understanding of the fundamentals of how movements are used and then carry it to a, another level, which is the integration of body and efficiency of movement. And that phase actually takes a lot longer to do. I would say, you know, most people need to study a minimum of 10 years to embody their movements. Um, and that's not because you're not being taught within that 10 years. It's because it takes that long for your body to evolve and to become, you know, to, to sort of wire this type of movement. You know, it is wired in the sense that we're using our brain to connect to the body. And there's a science to all of this, so. But, uh, so listen, I think, you know, that's good for today. And uh, they can 